Hello everyone, my name is Marcelo Rocha and I am a member of the MediaCon Lab at Fluminense Federal University, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The work I'm going to present is called Two Worlds Enhancing the Multimodal Interaction of a Social Robot to Assist Children with Autism and Emotion Regulation. This work had the collaboration of researchers from the Enseñada Center for Scientific Research and Higher Education, Mexico. I would like to present the agenda of my presentation. First, I will start with a brief introduction. Next, I will present our proposal. I will also talk about the evaluation process and finally to present our final considerations. Robot technologies are no longer used only in factories and have been increasingly used to assist people perform activities of daily living, improving their quality of life. Robots have become assistive devices that are capable of improving the physical and cognitive abilities of human beings. From the intersection of the assistive robots class with the interactive social robots, a new field of robotics emerges. Now, the goal is not just to provide some kind of assistance, but to provide stimuli through interaction with the robot. This new class is called Socially Assistive Robots, the SARS. SARS have been used in different types of health therapies, such as no pharmacological interventions. A SAR called EVA has been used in therapies with patients with dementia and Alzheimer's disease. It's possible to see a development and use of these interactive technologies with patients with autistic spectrum disorder, ASD. Several studies show that the use of these technologies can enrich these interventions, facilitate communication between therapists and patients, and supporting data collection and diagnostic assessment of patients. Studies have shown positive results in the interaction of robots with children with ASD. There are indications of a higher incidence of eye contact, proximity, and interaction between the child and the robot. The purpose of our work was to improve the EVA's multimodal interaction capability, extending its visual programming language, VPL, by adding the following components as first-class elements. The first gave the robot the ability to control light sensor effects, this new feature can make sessions more attractive and immersive, especially for children. The second element gave the robot the ability to recognize facial expressions. Well, this kind of figure is the EVA robot, a socially assistive robot. Now, I'm going to introduce the robot's hardware components. First, we have a 5.5 inch touch display. Through this screen, the robot is able to express itself through the eyes. We also have a Bluetooth speaker. On the right, we can see the controller board with two servo motors. This set is responsible for moving the robot head. And lastly, we have a matrix voice board connected to a Raspberry Pi 4. The Matrix Voice has 7 microphones and 18 RGB LEDs. The next figure shows the robot software architecture. It was built using the mean stack using MongoDB, Express, AngularJS and Node.js. The architecture also uses IBM Watson's external services for text-to-speech services and use the Google Cloud Speech API for speech-to-text services. EVA, in its basic version, has verbal and non-verbal communication skills. It is capable of recognize the human voice, is able to speak, is able to express emotions through the eyes, 
can move the head and also can run animations with the legs on its chest. Now we can see the expressions from the robot's eyes. We have the expressions of happiness, anger, sadness and neutrality. The first component that was implemented is called light and it gave the robot the ability to control light sensor effects, which can make sessions much more attractive and immersive. For that, we use a Xiaomi Smart Bulb with light model. It's a Wi-Fi and RGB bulb. We have implemented a new module in the robot that's able to communicate with the bulb through a TCP connection. We use the Net module which is a native Node.js module. With this component, the robot can turn the bulb on and off, set the light color and the transition time from one color to another. The second component was called User Emotion, because it gives the robot the ability to recognize the user's facial expression. We attach a webcam to the robot's body. Our research group already had a facial recognition module made in Python. In order to integrate the facial recognition module written in Python with the robot software, we decided to transform the module into a TCP server. So, we implemented in the robot code a TCP client module which could make requests to the Python model and get the user's expression. We can see on the left side of this slide a fragment of a VPL script and the process of connecting to the facial recognition server, which is in the center of the figure. The user emotion component sends a request to the server, which activates the webcam identifies the user's expression and returns a string with the inferred expression. This row process works asynchronously and doesn't block the script, so the robot can identify an expression while play a song, for example. We decided to test the accuracy of the user emotion component. Although the Python module recognizes seven types of facial expressions, we work with three of those that the robot can express – happy, angry and sad. We ran ten rounds with three expressions each, and we tested the expressions of happiness, anger and sadness. This test was made with two adults who positioned themselves in front of the robot's webcam and performed the three expressions mentioned. And as we can see in the table, we got a 80% accuracy. As the object of evaluation of our proposal, we created a serious game with three stages. The entire dynamics of the game was developed following the guidance of a therapist experienced in Therapies for Children with ASD. Each stage of the game had three questions, and the robot emphasized immediate reinforcement for each correct answer. Here are the three stages of the game. The first stage we call the color game. The second was called the game of emotions, and the third, the imitation game. I will explain the mechanics of each game in the following slides. In the game of colors, the robot, using our first component, presented a color to the child through the smart bulb and asked which color it was. The child would then have to answer the correct color. The second stage is the game of emotions. At this stage, the robot expressed emotions through the eyes and asked the child what was the name of the expression. The child should answer correctly. In the third stage of the game, the robot presented the emotions through its display and asked the child to imitate it. The robot 
then using our second component was able to detect the child's facial expression saying if he or she was correct here we can see the experimentation setup an important issue is that at this time we still didn't have the robots body printed in 3d but that didn't stop us from going ahead with the tests the game was tested with a six-year-old neurotypical child. This child in the image is my daughter and she loved interacting with the robot. And we can see in the image that she is trying to imitate the robot's expression. We then recorded some videos of the child playing each stage of the game. Uh, if anyone is interested in watching the videos, the links are indicated in the paper. The evaluation process of our work had a Google form with 13 questions. 48 adults aged between 19 and 61 years participated by watching the videos and answering the questions. This group consisted of health professionals and students. Four participants were excluded from the process for not filling out the form correctly. We divided the remaining 44 participants into two groups. We consider as experts those who have at least two years working with children with ASD. And we consider beginners those who have less than two years of experience. As an evaluation tool, you use the technology acceptance model. It is widely used in evaluation of applied health technologies. It's based on a questionnaire that contains two sets of questions. The first group refers to perceived usefulness and seeks to answer the following question. Using a specific system would increase his or her work performance. The second group of questions concerns perceived ease of use and tries to answer the following question. Using a particular system would be free from effort. We had eight questions from the first group and five from the second group. After obtaining the answers to the questionnaire, in order to verify if there was a statistical difference between the answers of the two groups, we applied the Man Whitney statistical test. The results showed that most experts agreed that the robot would be useful during therapies. The experts also agreed that it would be easy to use EVA in their therapies without too much effort. In question 1, from the perceived easy of use group, the experts indicated a difficult in verbal communication with the robot. Only in question 3, from the same group mentioned above, a statistical difference was identified. Beginners, unlike experts, found the sound effects to make sessions more appealing. During the work, we had some limitations, like not having the robot's body printed in 3D. What made us use a TV screen as a robot display? We also realized a latency in the audio capture process, which affected the robot's response time. And we found that a accuracy of the facial recognition model depends on the correct positioning of the child in front of the camera and the amount of light in the environment. So, we present the EVA robot extension aimed at therapies for patients with ASD enhancing the robot's multimodal interaction capability. This was made with the use of the sensory light effects using the smart bulb and the implementation of the facial expression recognition model through a webcam. We have extended the robot's visual programming language and we developed a serious game with three stages. The game was evaluated by 44 healthcare professionals using the technology acceptance model. And the results were promising, indicating that healthcare professionals found our proposal useful and easy to use in therapy sessions for children with ASD. As future work, we intend to make the robot can show videos or images. 
we are going to add a component that can generate handleness. We plan to create an XML-based scripting language for specifying interactive robot sections and integrate the robot with other multimedia applications. The term multimedia means multiple sensorial media. Now, I would like to show you a short video of the robot showing some of its capabilities. Hi, I am Robot Eva. I am a socially assisted robot. I can talk, and I can listen. I can also control the lighting. I can express emotions through my eyes. I can express anger. I can be sad. I can be happy. I can also recognize facial expressions through the camera located above my head. I can play sounds. And I can play music. Thanks. Bye. Well, I conclude my presentation here. And I would like to thank you for the opportunity to be here participating in this very important event. Here's my email and I'm available for questions. Thank you very much.